But if this is you, you're someone who probably did too many posterior pelvic tilts or cued pushing your back down aggressively into the table or ground while you were doing things like leg lifts or bridges or things like that. Hey guys, Greg Chaplin here, physical therapist and strength conditioning specialist. And in this video, we're gonna talk about what happens when too much rounding in your low back is limiting your hip mobility. We'll explain how this relationship works in the first place. Then we'll go through a simple exercise progression that you can use to address this issue. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right in. So how does excessive lumbar flexion or rounding limit hip mobility? So in order for us to get the knee all the way up towards the chest and demonstrate maximum hip mobility, we wanna get as much movement as the hip and as little movement in the back as we possibly can. So if we just zoom in on the hip for a second here, if we bring this knee up towards the chest, as we're passing through this 90 degree position, we need this bone to be able to twist up into internal rotation. And we need the back of the pelvis to be able to open, expand, and lengthen here a little bit. So if we can't do that, our motion's gonna stop somewhere here around 90 degrees. Now, if we wanna get that knee up further towards the chest and we don't have the ability to open up the back of this pelvis, then we have to find another way. That other way, if you have excessive flexibility in the lumbar spine, is to take the entire pelvis as a unit and tip it back and have the lumbar spine come down towards the table to the point where the entire pelvis rolls back and we're gonna have just the back resting on the table. If this is you, you're someone who probably did too many posterior pelvic tilts or cued pushing your back down aggressively into the table or ground while you were doing things like leg lifts or bridges or things like that. So you're probably gonna wanna stop that because if that's you, you're probably using too much flexibility here in the lumbar spine and gumming up this back of the pelvis as you're doing it. So in order to restore this relationship, we need to get into a position where we actually get this into a more neutral or arched lumbar spine position. Then we need to teach that pelvis how to move through space without that lumbar spine rounding and then we need to get some cues going that help us open up the back of the pelvis. So let's go ahead and show you how to do that with these exercises. So this first activity we're gonna go through is an all fours rocking activity, and I'm gonna throw a couple of bonus cues at you here. So most people who excessively round here through the lumbar spine usually have an inability to shift the rib cage back into space without rounding that lumbar spine. So this all fours position is a great chance for us to reach through the ground or the table and practice lifting this lower rib cage up. Once we have this lower rib cage up, we're gonna create a little bit of tension here in the low back. So you're gonna feel like you're a little bit more towards an arch here in the low back than you're probably used to. And if you looked at your belt line, it's gonna be more or less perpendicular to whatever your support surface is. Now maintaining this relationship of rib cage back and the pelvis in a neutral position relative to that rib cage, you're gonna practice using your hands to push your hips back. Now you'll notice at a certain point, if you lack that hip mobility, you're gonna to wanna to have that pelvis rock back into a posterior tilt. You're gonna to wanna to avoid this in this case. So again, we're reaching through the hands, Lower rib cage comes up, little arch in the low back so that the waistband is perpendicular to the support surface. We'll reach with the hands, pushing the hips back, and we'll go only as far as we can until we feel that pelvis starting to dump back into a posterior tilt. So let me show you a couple of good reps here. Rib cage back, lumbar spine in neutral, waistband perpendicular, pushing back getting a little bit of a sensation of pulling, opening, stretching on the back of the pelvis, and then we'll rock back forward. And you could do this a number of times, using the hands, pushing back. Go only as far as you can without that pelvis dumping back into a posterior tilt, and then rock back forward. Now another great type exercise to practice this relationship is your typical bird dog type exercise. We'll actually start with a little bit lower level exercise here to start. So once again, we're gonna reach through the support surface, get that lower rib cage to come back in space, a little bit of a neutral or arched position here in the low back. And then from here, you're gonna keep all that stable. So rib cage and pelvis connected. And then what you do is you practice moving a leg without losing that relationship. Everything else stays still just the leg moving. And it's usually easiest to do one leg at a time. So do a couple reps on one side, and then shift a little bit, re-engage that lower rib cage, re-engage that lower back, make sure you have support in the abs and the back, 
and then you'd move the leg. Now another progression you can use here is an elevated push-up. So again, we're gonna use the hands to move that lower rib cage back in space, but we're gonna make sure that the hips are coming through and we have the low back in a more arched or neutral position. Now from here, we wanna think about allowing the shoulder blades and elbows to pretty much be the only thing that are moving here as we come down as far as we can without losing that stack. And then we push back up. Inhale down, exhale return. Common mistakes here again are gonna be losing that rib cage coming forward or allowing that back to pop back into a rounded position. So we're gonna get that rib cage back in space. We're gonna allow a little bit of an arch to come into that low back. So we should feel like we have activation on the front sides and back of that torso. Then we're just moving shoulder blades and elbows coming down on an inhale and exhaling to return. Inhale down. Exhale to return. Now another great activity that we can use here is actually going to be just a standing hip flexion activity. So again, we're gonna get that rib cage to come back in space. We're gonna feel that weight go into the heels. Then we're gonna maintain a little bit of support in that low back so we have more of a neutral or arched position. And then as we come up, we wanna maintain that low back position and the stacked position of the rib cage relative to the low back. So we're gonna bring that knee up, keeping the knee, hip, and foot all in alignment. You bring that up as far as you can. And what you want to avoid here is the tendency to want to round under like this. So remember, we're trying to prevent that rounding of the low back and get more movement at the hip than the back. So you hold on to something for support, shift the rib cage back, little support in the back, and then we're gonna bring that leg up, bring the knee towards the chest, trying to maintain the stack and get most of the movement here at the hip not a lot of movement here at the low back. You're gonna inhale in the initial position, exhale as you come up. And if you get here and you can add a little resistance with your hand, that will work too. And you'll practice holding that position while you maintain a little bit of support in the abdominals as well as the back. This is also gonna to help to work the deep hip flexors, which are gonna help you stabilize the lumbar spine and pelvis. So now that we've got the hang of maintaining this relationship of the rib cage and the back and making sure that the hip is what's moving more than the back, now we can go into the hinging activities that are really gonna make the biggest difference here. So we can hold a kettlebell here and just do a standard kettlebell deadlift. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna shift that lower rib cage back in space so it's over the pelvis, maintain a little bit of support in the lumbar spine so you have a neutral or arched position. And then we're gonna practice shifting the hips back, maintaining that stacked position and feeling a little bit of opening on the back of that pelvis. Once we get to this position, we can either hang here and do a series of breaths, just feeling a little bit more stability in the low back and a little bit more opening on the pelvis, or we can make it a little bit more dynamic by just doing repetitions. We can inhale here. We're gonna exhale as we go back. stable lumbar spine, make sure that rib cage is back over the pelvis, and we're gonna feel the back of the pelvis opening. Take a breath in here, then exhale to return. Now, once we have the hang of that, we can then take this into a more staggered position by taking one foot and putting it slightly ahead relative to the other. Then we're gonna take that kettlebell and put it in front of the back leg. We're gonna use those same cues. Inhale back. Exhale, return. Inhale back. Exhale, return. Okay, so to recap, if we have too much rounding of the low back and not enough mobility in the hip, we're gonna have an imbalance here. It's gonna perpetuate itself unless we can flip this relationship. So we wanna get stability in the low back and move that leg through space or move the body relative to the leg without rounding the low back, making sure to open up that back of the pelvis. That's what's gonna give us that hip mobility back that we're looking for and that stability here in the low back and core. Okay, so that does it for this video. As always, thanks a lot for watching and until next time, peace.